The community of Jesus on Cape Cod. More than 300 people living and worshiping on the oceanfront in Orleans. Just a wholesome atmosphere, and we felt that everyone here had the same goals in mind. A community drawn from the best and the brightest, active in town affairs, united by a common vision. People are looking for the truth. But what is the truth? Does it include public humiliation? You'd sit down and wonder what was going to be brought up at dinner. Privacy invasion. If you were not trying to have a baby, then it was sin. And physical abuse. And she slapped him first from one side, then on the other. And they kept saying, harder, harder, come on, more. What's really happening behind the walls of this Cape Cod compound? Why would these people make up stories if they didn't happen? Community or cult? A Chronicle Investigation, next. Tonight, Peter Mahegan, Mary Richardson, and Mike Barnacle. Chronicle, the New England News Magazine. Looks like a Catholic mass, but in fact, this group is not affiliated with any traditional religion. These people are ex-Catholics, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, drawn together to form their own born-again Christian community on Cape Cod. They call themselves the Community of Jesus. The membership includes the cream of society, a Rockefeller heir, the former chairman of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, a former editor of Doubleday Publishing, and followers appear zealous in their enthusiasm. Each one of us felt that God was calling us to give ourselves completely to Him and to live a, a life set apart. But while hundreds say they've found spiritual fulfillment here, growing numbers of former members describe the community of Jesus as a kind of religious prison camp. You were screamed at, you were humiliated, you were punished. I was told that all I deserved was hell. As a new sister, it's like being a piece of raw meat. You know, they really, they, they're going to work you down until you submit, you know, until you have no will left. These are serious allegations. Suzanne Uten, formerly Sister Claudia, has started a new life in Oklahoma, but still has nightmares about the community she left. Uten alleges physical and mental abuse, which she says she endured because she'd been brainwashed. I was on my knees one day thanking them for slapping the sillies out of me, because if they hadn't done it, I would have left, and I'm so grateful they beat me. And that's where I was before the light bulbs went up. Community leaders emphatically deny all these allegations. In fact, it was they who invited our cameras in. They'd hoped to demonstrate their need to build a new $6 million church. With its beautiful grounds overlooking picturesque Rock Harbor in Orleans, the community of Jesus has the feel of a utopia. 350 Christians, they say, living together in harmony, with hundreds of other members nearby or coming on retreats. The community, which includes a monastery, convent, and 22 homes, describes itself as a modern-day abbey. I think people are looking for more meaning in their lives. People are looking for, as everyone is, you know, uh, people are looking for the truth. People are looking for solutions to problems. The Community of Jesus was founded in 1970 by two housewives, Kay Anderson from Braintree and Judy Sorensen from New Jersey. The two had met at a Cape Cod church where Kay was sickly and Judy agreed to pray for her. Through prayer, they claim, Kay was healed and out of gratitude, the community of Jesus was born. I recognized that there was a faith and, and, a, and a reality about the life here and I was very attracted to that. I was a person that was pretty mixed up and um, I knew I needed um, I knew I needed healing. Others, too, came for healing, having undergone some crisis that made them turn to religion. 
a death in the family, a drinking problem, a troubled marriage. Here they were bombarded with love, but former members say also bombarded with criticism, their personalities all but destroyed. Told, they say, they were sinners whose problems, even illnesses, were caused by their evil ways. There was a lot of love and there was a lot of um, fear, a lot of admonishing, and it was extreme. One moment you were made to feel as though you were the most wonderful person in the world, and then later you were brought down and made to feel like the scum of the earth. One forum for confession, ex-members say, was a therapy session called a light group. In them, one person would be asked to divulge the most intimate secrets of their life. Then he or she would be turned on by the rest of the group, attacked, ridiculed, and they say screamed at for hours. During a retreat uh, one time, the memory of being molested as a child came back and um, ended up in a light group being confronted with the fact that at age three and four and five, I drew this to myself, that I was sexually sick, that um, this would not have happened if I had not wanted it. I don't remember why it was, but the man had supposedly mistreated his wife. And so they had the man stand up against the wall, absolutely straight, and the wife stand in front of him. And she was told to slap him. And she slapped him first on one side, then on the other. And they kept saying, harder, harder, come on, more. And they egged her into really wagging him. With up to 20 people living in every home, former members say, impromptu light groups were also called together at all hours of the day and night. Dinner time was just horrible. It was, it was a horror show. It would be... You'd sit down and wonder what was going to be brought up at dinner. And there was always something that was, um, somebody got ripped apart. Somebody was in tears at every dinner time. Former sister Samantha Hamilton first began to grow disenchanted with the community after emergency surgery for appendicitis. When I got back, I had just gotten home. I was in bed, um, and one of the sis the, both of the sisters that are there came in and t asked me why I thought I got appendicitis and was I trying to get attention. But that was in keeping with their philosophy, was it not that illness comes from sin? Right, from sin. And so it must have been something that I did that made me get appendicitis. Co-founder Kay Anderson died several years ago. Our repeated requests to interview Judy Sorensen about former members' allegations were denied. Current director Betty Pugsley admits light groups did go on, but she says they were stopped. At what point, she cannot remember. The people who ran these, they were therapists, psychologists. Nobody, quote, ran, and it wasn't really a formal group as such. But you recognize, you must recognize in human nature that it's, that's dangerous territory to tread on when you're trying to tell someone how the rest yes. of the world sees them. Yes, it is absolutely and dangerous. And fool their mental stability. It, I wouldn't say, uh, I wouldn't agree with you fooling with mental stability, but it is dangerous territory. And because of that, that was, um, you know, we soon, that was soon disbanded. Now, as recently as three years ago, one member told us she experienced the worst light group she'd had in her entire time here. So it must have been within the last three years? No. Um, to my... Again, I say I've lived here 21 years. I do not know of, of any like groups in quite a number of years, uh, not certainly any within the last three. So I'd, I have no idea what she's talking about. Coming up next, forced to lie on the floor for over 12 hours to break me. Did it happen? 